how many human senses do we have? <laughs> what a leading question. <laughs> so I think most people know of five. And then there is this phrase, the sixth sense. And sometimes people think that's intuition. But interestingly, a lot of people actually think it's balance. So I saw a scientific journal paper that said humans may have up to 22 to 33 senses. And that started me doing a, a full literature review. And I've ended up creating a table of 34 senses. Um, now, some of them are non-conscious, things like the pH of your blood. Um, but it still speaks to the fact that we have so many more senses than most people realise. And if we're not even conscious of them, then we're not actively tapping into them. Something I think is also quite interesting is some of the senses that animals have that we don't have, like echolocation or just superior sense of smell in dogs and cats. And dogs and cats can actually um, even smell impending death. So in care homes, they often go and sit by people who are about to die. And this actually makes sense scientifically because when you're dying, cells die off in a certain order and that releases a certain smell and, and dogs and cats are sensitive to that. There was a famous nurse who actually smelt her husband's Parkinson's disease years before he was diagnosed. Um, and that has been used to create a chemical swab test to help diagnose Parkinson's disease earlier. So basically, some humans have, you know, a superior sense of certain senses. Some animals have senses that we don't have. I just think it opens up a very interesting, you know, sort of curiosity about what, what more we're capable of. Yeah, it also really invites the inquiry around what are the potential latent faculties, you know, what are what's potentially lying dormant within our DNA in a culture and society that's we're so prevalently like disconnected from our body and our mm -hmm. the sensitivity of our senses. Just uh it's it's interesting to see what could still be there yet to discover. Now, when you say up to 34, could you like walk us through maybe what a few of those might be because mm -hmm. Seems like we got five senses yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at first glance. Yeah. So, um, well, let's take one of those five and um, taste is subdivided into five. So that's already yeah. 10, basically. So that's sweet, sour, salty, bitter and umami. And umami was only discovered in the 1980s. So it shows that, you know, new ones are being discovered over time. And, you know, perhaps we'll end up with more than 34 that we know about. So some of the other ones are balance, which I mentioned is equilibrioception. The fact that you can close your eyes and touch your nose without having vision relies on something called proprioception, which is how you know where your joints and limbs are in space when you can't see them. There are obviously um, appetite and waste senses, um, stomach fullness, bladder fullness, I'm trying to think of which ones would be interesting to mention. Interoception we talked on a little bit last time. Yes. Um, so, yeah, that's true. And actually, the, the 34 can be separated into introceptive and extraceptive. So ones where the stimulus comes from outside and ones where it's, it's things going on inside the body, which you're less usually conscious of. Um, I think one that's really important, really interesting is chronoception, which is the passing of time. And there's a subjective element to this. And the ancient Greeks knew this because they have two different words, chronos and kairos. And one's the objective passing of time, like the 24-hour clock and the light-dark circle. And one is your sense of, oh, it feels like, you know, like we just saw each other yesterday kind of thing. Or, or you know, I may feel like that. You may say it feels like it was years ago. So that's the subjective part. It's fascinating because it's been said in so many different ways that perception is reality, right? And the way that our senses perceive reality becomes reality to us in so many ways. And you spoke to, you know, bats with echolocation, um, dolphins with sonar, and all the different ways in which different species and uh, different animals have the capacity and cultivated the ability, ability to navigate their own reality. Yeah. It also makes me think of I believe David Eagleman's work doing uh, being able to train humans to detect true north. And so, Ooh. yeah, so I believe it was talking with Annika Harris on this podcast about um, about some of that research. Mm -hmm. And they were able to significantly statistically show how they, by wearing this belt, training for a while after a few weeks, uh, 
we as humans could like detect where true north is with just our body, which is fascinating. So it's like just it's interesting to see what is yet to be discovered in that realm. Exactly, because I was just about to say another sense that we don't have, but maybe I'm wrong, is magnetoreception, which is how migrating birds know where to, you know, tra- how to navigate these long distances. So yeah, who knows? <laughs> and then we have all of these a bit more hard to empirically verify subjective experiences within our consciousness of like synesthesia, where a lot of artists or creatives have this phenomena. So what what is synesthesia? And then we can maybe explore a bit more of these interesting kind of slightly esoteric ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, you've actually just reminded me that I wrote about synesthesia in the book. And that's when two different senses kind of become confused or overlapping. So like you can taste music or um, you can smell colour. So it's all, it's just a really strange combination. So again, the fact that that can happen in some human brains just leaves it very open to what else can change. I've heard both some personal friends and then also artists online like John Mayer who you know, once you get to the place of no mind when playing with an instrument, you have the uh, this appearance in your consciousness where math and shapes and colors appear according to different musical notes and Mm -hmm. scales. And uh, they're all obviously correlated in ways we're somewhat aware of, but also a lot largely unaware of. Mm. Uh, So it's, it's interesting to see the dimension within us that is so vast that like all these things appear in our consciousness um, in, in a, in the synesthesia sense uh, where we we don't fully understand what's happening, but Mm. Maybe we will one day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, you and I were just chatting beforehand about the fact that I tried this driverless car and whilst I'm in LA. Yeah. And that w- that was science fiction when I was growing up. So if you think about how much has changed since, you know, Star Trek came out and now there's driverless cars in LA, how much could change in the same next period of time? And and actually the pace of change has increased so much as well, you know, for example, with AI. So, yeah, it's a very exciting time to be alive. <laughs> <laughs>